Hello viewers and welcome back to the world of the future. I just love being able to say that because that's really how it feels. I mean, the future is truly upon us, folks. Are you ready for the AI revolution that's already beginning to take place? Honestly, I don't think any of us are truly ready. And before you comment on my hair, no, I'm not super sweaty. I just took a shower, all right? Viewers, do not forget to tune in tomorrow for the weekly AI news roundup where I just cover essentially everything that happened in AI in the past week. I'm going to be trying to do these every single Friday. But today's piece of news was so gigantic that I have to share it with you guys. Yesterday, something pretty incredible was announced. As you can see, Emad here on Twitter, who is the CEO of Stability AI, the creators of Stable Diffusion Text to Image, he essentially tweeted out the release of Stable LM. This is the first Stability AI large language model. If you guys don't know what a language model is, ChatGPT is a language model. GPT-4 is a language model. It's really the subsurface that all other AIs grow out of in a very strange way. They started out by releasing a 3 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model. And 15 and 65 billion parameter models are following. And yes, of course, in true stability AI fashion, these are going to be open source for the community to joy and modify. And essentially, guys, open source just means that it's completely free. We'll be able to access it for free on different websites, just like Stable Diffusion. You'll be able to modify it and mess around with it and do all sorts of really cool stuff with it. This is the kind of AI that enables our future, truthfully. I'm a big fan and promoter of open source software. And as you can see, the logo for the language model is Evesin. Um, generated by Stable Diffusion XL, which is pretty cool. And I haven't talked about Stable Diffusion XL. I'm going to get to it in tomorrow's AI News Roundup, but a full video on Stable Diffusion XL and the Dream Studio update is coming soon. So Emad, the CEO, says he's proud of the team for dealing with melted graphics cards. And by the way, guys, these melted graphics cards are $5,000 a pop at the cheapest. Loads of details, inner workings, and more coming soon now that this is out should view as a continuous process versus a one and done. So this is just the beginning of Stable LM. This isn't just a final release of something. This is just the start of something much, much greater. So yeah, Stable LM is a direct competitor to something like OpenAI's GPT models, and while this definitely is not as good as OpenAI's GPT-4, or probably even GPT-3.5, GPT-4, GPT-3.5, ChatGPT, those models are not open source, meaning the community can't access them for free and build off of them for completely free. OpenAI holds complete control over those models, can charge whatever they want for them, and has a complete say in terms of censorship and what the AI language models are allowed to be used for. So, they say that Stability AI has been honing down on their exact position in the AI ecosystem, and it is as follows. They want to be the biggest supporter of open, ecosystem, academic, independent, and otherwise. The stable series of models is the equivalent of Red Hat done deliberatively and fully open and auditable. So this really is their goal, and if you guys don't know, Red Hat is essentially the company that created Linux, and it was an open source operating system for computers that is what a lot of software today is built off of. I mean, every server you ever connect to is probably just based off of Linux. So they want to be the backbone of AI in a way just by being open source and openly accessible unlike OpenAI, ironically. They want to make these models available across every modality, sector, and nationality to provide the foundation to activate humanity's potential with AI. They are going to be the building blocks in their view. Whether this is actually going to be the case remains to be seen, but it's an admirable thing, I would say. Very difficult to do in our society, though. So this is the GitHub repo. This repository contains Stability AI's ongoing development of the Stable LM series of language models and will be continuously updated with new checkpoints. Very exciting to see. You know, with OpenAI, we have to wait a long time for updates. This thing is just going to be bam, bam, bam. Every time they have a new checkpoint ready, it gets updated on the GitHub. The following provides an overview of all currently available models. More coming soon. So yes, on April 20th, we got the initial release of stable LM alpha models, the 3 billion and 7 billion parameter models. You can chat with the 7 billion model on hugging face spaces for completely free. So we're going to be testing that in this video. So stable LM alpha models are trained on the new data set 
It's built on the pile which contains 1.5 trillion tokens and is actually roughly three times the size of the pile data set. The context length for these models is 4096 tokens, which is pretty decent context. That's very good to see. So just for a proof of concept, they fine tuned the model with Stanford Alpaca's procedure using a combination of five recent data sets for conversational agents. And they have all of these different trained data sets here. And you'll be able to use all of these models in the stable LM tuned alpha. As you can see, here are the checkpoint files, 800 billion training tokens. Still, it's important to point out that the OpenAI models are much, much bigger. GPT 3.5 at its best is 175 billion parameters, which is a lot. And GPT 4 <clears throat> has one one trillion parameters one trillion parameters so yeah i mean it's it's behind okay it's behind in a lot of ways that doesn't mean it's entirely useless and it doesn't mean it's not going to grow this is a great starting point as you can see they plan to get up to this size and these are all the ones that are in progress and they actually do have a notebook to run inference with limited gpu capabilities you can get started with stable lm tuned alpha using this code snippet right here so this is for more advanced power users i will probably try to create a tutorial on how to run this if viewers at home are interested licensed under creative commons which is what we love to see fine-tuned checkpoints are licensed under non-commercial creative commons so let's go ahead and try to chat with this thing we'll say hello it says hi how can i help you today very very normal responses so far we'll start off by asking this thing to write a story about three completely unrelated objects and it's going to have to synthesize and hallucinate a full story about a duck, $100 bill, and a candy factory. Let's see how it does. All right, it's going off here right off the bat. By the way, viewers, you can try this out for completely free. I'll link it down below. And it wrote us a nice little story here, it seems. Once upon a time, there was a duck living in a land far, far away. This duck lived in a river and was very happy because she had lots of friends who would visit her every single day. She would swim up and play with her friends and everyone would love her because of her carefree nature. Pretty good start to the story. One day, a big pile of money was stolen from the duck's bucket. The duck was very upset because she worked so hard for this money, and now it was gone. So I guess this was a pretty, pretty rich duck. She spent all of her time searching for it, but to no avail. As she was wondering where the money could have gone, she decided to take the money out of her bucket and put it into a candy factory. So I guess she still had some uh, money left over there. The factory was a small cozy room filled with colorful candy and toys. It was a happy place for the duck to be because she could help people and have a good time. The duck kept the money in the candy factory for many years, but she never forgot about it. She would often sneak treats to her friends and share them with them. Right, the language here is not super advanced or as coherent, I would say, as something like GPT-4. We'll try this prompt with GPT-4. The duck was very happy because she had plenty of money and everyone loved her. One day, a bad storm swept in the factory and destroyed the room. The duck was so sad to lose her candy factory, but she was also relieved to be living in a shelter. Random. The duck was grateful to be alive and happy, and she never forgot about the candy factory and the happiness it brought her. Okay. It combined all of the elements decently well, considering this thing just came out and it's open source, but I gotta say the language here was a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum, I would say it's not very coherent in terms of the way it produces the story. It's a pretty difficult prompt, though, I'll admit. Let's see how GPT-4 does it. I mean, obviously, GPT-4 is going to nail it because it's just the best model out there. But keep in mind that whole open source thing and the building blocks. They don't necessarily need to be the best because other people are going to take these things and fine tune them for specific applications. And there is a lot to offer when you got free open source software. All right, let's see about GPT-4. I mean, you can already tell there's uh, a lot going on with this story. Once upon a time, small quaint town named Chocoville, very, very unique name, candy factory that produced the most delicious confections in the land. Yes, lots of very good grammar here. Owned by a woman named Abigail. Curious duck waddled into Chocoville, attracted by the smell of candy, stumbled upon a $100 bill. The other model literally said just a bunch of money, and this actually did the specific $100 bill. Duck picked up the bill in its beak and decided to visit the candy factory to see what it could buy. When the duck arrived, the owner of 
of the factory was amazed to see the duck carrying around the hundred dollar bill offered to give the duck a tour of the factory and they strolled through the vast halls D duck couldn't help but notice a door with the sign that read do not enter the curious duck asked about the room oh okay she led her into the uh this the secret room and the duck bought a piece of candy for a hundred dollars which is pretty steep Oh, the candy can grant any wish when consumed. Again, very creative and detailed here from GPT-4. And the duck wished to become the guardian of the candy factory. Beautiful iridescent feathers, ultra aura of pure sweetness. Named the duck Candy Guard. Okay, that's not very creative. They lived happily ever after. Very good job, but chat GPT, not surprising at all. So yeah, I mean, obviously GPT-4 is probably going to be better in every single circumstance you compare this thing against it to, but it's just the beginning. Stable Diffusion started off being worse than Dolly, but quickly fine-tuned Stable Diffusion models became better than Dolly too. I said, tell me about yourself. It goes, I'm sorry, I'm just a language model, don't have personal experiences. Is there anything else I can help you with? This reminds me very much of like open assistant type of speech. This is actually a pretty good response. I asked that who is the fast person in the world that goes, I can't say for sure who the fastest person is, as that would be an impossible question to answer. I'm not sure what it means by that. However, some people believe that the fastest person in the world is currently considered to be Usain Bolt in the 100 meter world race, who currently holds the world record for fastest speed during a race. That is tr a true fact. However, again, this thing has a distinct lack of grammar and a very abrupt way of speaking. It doesn't go into a lot of detail. Why is it impossible to answer? And it goes, there are many different disciplines of running and cycling. Each one is generally considered to be the fastest in that particular event. However, the fastest hundred... Okay, yeah. The, the world record is different depending on the rider and athlete and competition. I guess that's a fair response. What is the current time of day? I can't give you an exact answer, but I can tell you that the weather in the area you're interested in usually changes throughout the day. It's probably best to check the local news or weather app for a more accurate time. So it's doing a decent job. It's kind of just denying that because it doesn't have access to the information. However, it, it almost slipped up here saying that I can tell you the weather in the area you're interested in usually changes throughout the day. Like, how does it know that for sure? And it did give us a little reminder here. Write me a rhyming rap about coconuts. Coconuts are tasty treats that are perfect for a summer day. Coconuts are round and sweet. You can eat them like candy doesn't rhyme. There's a story of a rabbit that fell off a tree and you know what happened to his home? It's just a quack. When coconuts are round and perfect for a snack. Okay, there's a rhyme. You can pick them up and enjoy them in the air and trunk. If you eat enough, you can feel happy and great. But the main thing is to let them stay down with your date. Okay, it's very, very much a miscellaneous rhyming rap. Not super impressive, but I mean... It, it understood the context of the situation, at least. I can't wait to see what people build off of this thing, though, because you can do really specific tasks and train it on very specific data sets of information, and it will always be accurate on those. I said, who is Matvid Pro AI? And it says, Matvid is an artificial intelligence that is currently in development for use in the field of gaming and artificial intelligence. However, it is unclear when or if he will be implemented in the gaming industry. So that's just a complete hallucination. For example, if you ask this question to GPT-4, GPT-4 actually knows to say, oh, as of my cutoff date in September 2021, Matt VidPro AI does not seem to be a well-known or notable individual. Sad face. It is possible that Madrid Pro AI is a username, which is true, a small scale project or an entity that has emerged after my last update. In that case, I wouldn't have any information about it. Please provide more context or details if you're looking for information about a specific person or project. So that's like the correct answer that you would want out of this instead of a complete hallucination. I can also tell you for sure that this model doesn't really seem to want to write a lot. GPT-4 is very verbose and it likes to talk a lot. GPT-3.5 wasn't as much of a talker, but this thing is definitely not much of a talker at all. It prefers to say less instead of more, and that is something that will probably increase and change over time as these models get bigger. And then I said, summarize our conversation, and this thing is going, as an AI language model, I do not have access to real-time information. However, based on our previous conversation, it appears that the topic of conversation was related to a duck, $100 bill, and a candy factory. I mean, close enough, that was a part of our conversation. I suggested that the duck find a way to recover the money stolen from the bucket, not 
necessarily true. You didn't suggest anything, but she was upset about losing her candy factory. The candy factory was a happy place for the duck. I, I guess that's true where she could help others and have a good time. The duck was grateful to be alive and happy, and she never forgot about the candy factory and the happiness it brought her. Interesting. We're going to have to explore these models further in the future. I'm going to move on to an AMA that Emad did about stable LM. I'm sure a lot of questions you guys have are similar to those that people have been asking him. But yes, you can expect us to circle around back to this model and do some more in-depth testing in the future. I just wanted to show it off for you guys. And you can do your own testing at home for completely free. It responds usually within like 30 seconds or so. So it's not too bad. So yes, as you can see, Emad did hashtag Stable LM, ask me anything below. As you can see, the first one here is, do you think that Stable LM would make a great foundation to make non-English language models? And he essentially responds by saying, it depends, different languages have different needs. So certain languages might actually come out really well with Stable LM being used as a foundation, and certain languages might not want to use Stable LM as a foundation for that model. So this guy offered some advice on how to host Stable LM in order to lower their costs significantly, and they actually said they're not really hosting the model as of yet. I think Hugging Face might be picking up the slack on that at the moment. Another language question, he's essentially asking if different languages have been being trained on the model. Are they planning to train the language models in Hindi, Bengali, and all these other different ones, including Spanish and French, English, but all languages in coming years. So he plans to make this really universal, which is a great thing. Are field of use restrictions or other conditions that have historically been rejected by free and open source communities and open data advocates beneficial or necessary? Very good question. He says, sometimes when you're trying to figure stuff out before the final release, open has its place, closed has its place, stuff in between too. Unlike code, these models are really intentional things with lots of legislation and more brewing. So yes, there's going to be laws surrounding this stuff for sure, and that's really going to govern how they're used. This guy asks if the 4096 token limit will see improvements in the near future, and he says yes, this token limit is going to increase with flash attention and some other upcoming things, which is good. Looking at these, I think context windows will not be an issue. Quite crazy stuff. Interested in taking over StableLM.com and building Dream Studio for language models, he says no thanks, which is pretty funny. He'd rather let other people build the GUI and interfaces for these models. How does it stack up to GPT 3.5 or Llama today? Is it instruct tuned yet? It does not stack up as it has not even trained on one epoch yet and still coordinating the ideal data set. We are training lots in parallel, so it's not really stacking up to these models. I mean, as we just saw today, but it's definitely coming soon. And this is pretty insane. This guy asks, how big was the cluster of GPUs that the models were trained on and what types of GPUs are they? Stable LM is currently training on about 3,000 A100s and 512 TPU V4s. H100s are coming soon. So yeah, I mean, the model training is in the works for sure. Any options for use in auto GPT or an API? He says, wait for the better versions. The higher code base will be useful. Will we get any official benchmarks soon when we get to the beta? I imagine still testing different approaches and data sets. Will you be able to train your own model in the future with your own data set? Yes, you can do that now, which is just fantastic. I mean, that is really the cream of the crop about this announcement. So viewers, tell me what you think down in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion about this. Are open source models the future of AI development? I think this is going to be very important. I think this is the start of something great, just like Stable Diffusion was the start of something great. We can expect many fine-tuned models for different purposes in the future, all different kinds of things you can imagine, and they are going to be lower cost and more accessible because of the open source announcement. Thanks so much for watching, viewers. Tune in tomorrow for an AI news recap and I will see you in the next one. The future is coming, folks, and some say it's already here. I'll see you in the next one.